A quick new idea daily from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. From what we buy through Amazon to what we watch on Netflix, our modern lives are often heavily curated and at times improved by the algorithms that understand our preferences. But what if we tap into the same AI technology that knows what we shop for to help bridge achievement gaps in education? Sophia Hodgkinson is a social entrepreneur and medical student at University of Turin. She says we can help more kids that are left behind if we use artificial intelligence to catch their education needs earlier. When we consider education, we have to remember it is our future. And a couple of exams will determine which university you go to, what subject you can study. And those factors will really, really intricately entangle with opportunities that you have access to. It's not going to be as easy for someone from a low socioeconomic background to achieve the same grades as someone with the financial capacity to support tutoring, summer schools, extracurricular experiences to enrich their application. When we look at tutoring, we also must remember it's very expensive with average costs per hour for many subjects being 40 pounds or above. I started thinking about the lack of technology that we don't use to help us in the context of education and more specifically in tutoring. And I started to question the basic norms that I grew accustomed to. A strange conclusion, or let's say observation that I came to was as a student, when I asked for help, the approach was to resolve the problem that was happening in that moment. And if we're taking an analogy from the healthcare setting, dealing with the problem that someone tells you about in that moment is actually dealing with the superficial symptoms perhaps without actually solving the underlying condition. Why is it that if someone comes to a health class over and over and over and over again, struggling with the subject, our education system does not provide us with tools to assess our patients further, but the actual current practice is to dismiss a student for being uninterested, unintelligent, or just to assume that they lack some fundamental ability to understand the subject. Why do we not consider that they've actually missed something minor, but fundamental, a concept which was introduced earlier in their academic career? Telling kids they're not good enough is not good enough. And quite frankly, it's just not true. A new era of education is needed. We need to break through into a reality where you can make use of your genome in the context of education. And perhaps through data and technologies, find a supporting tool for that. Data is a gold mine. Process data can show us actually where we need to carry out our targeted learning, how we can fix our problematic areas and reach our potential. A term which often accompanies data is artificial intelligence. AI is a wide variety of technologies from machine learning to natural language processing. These technologies allow machines to sense, to comprehend, act and learn. AI is not a new concept, but in the recent decades, it's become more accessible, and so its implementation has also increased. From the finance world to the healthcare, to arts, to education, to artificial intelligence technologies everywhere, they're not here to take over the world. They're here to do the tasks that we don't have to do, such as processing data. Being a medical student, I often found that I wasn't managing to take in the large volumes of information I was supposed to effectively because I just felt that I didn't have a way to do so. My chosen method is active recall and it takes a lot of time. And my options were quite limited to studying by myself, which was very boring, studying with a partner, which was let's say at max 50% effective, or to hire a tutor, which was crazy expensive. So I knew there was another way, or at least I felt that there should be. And at that point I started thinking, what if we use natural language processing to create an AI tutor who reads and questions you on content that you upload and promotes active recall by interacting with you and providing you an unbiased assessment of what you actually learned during that hour or two hours or 10 hours. So you can go back and patch up the gaps that you perhaps didn't take in. I found an NLP company that focuses on providing language learning. 
And it's exciting because language learning does use a lot of the repetition, a lot of the interacting with sounds that you see natural language processing technologies doing. And I'm excited to see it in the sector of education, but I'm worried that we're going slower than other sectors and that's a problem. And look, I get it. Education is an institution and institutions don't like change, but we have to evolve so we can get closer to that reality of providing equity of opportunity for all. Artificial intelligence should not replace interactions. And it will not. But what we are moving into is an era of luxury where we can delegate tasks to machines, which would have taken up our time in the past. And this gap, which is created by delegating tasks to machines, will give us an opportunity to interact with each other more, to learn and to evolve. I truly believe that education is the foundation to solutions of many root causes of problems we see today. And I believe that through combining human compassion and intellect with efficiency of machines, we can bring equity to all and build a truly inclusive future. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in Lisboa, Portugal. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDxU Lisboa. Want to listen to the full talk? Find Sophia's talk and more at TED.com slash TEDx Shorts. I'm Matosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow.